This video accompanies a series of blog posts written at blog.gnetgroup.com which detail the ease with which flat file data can be brought into PowerPivot, modeled, and migrated to Slice and Dice Business Intelligence dashboards. In this video, we'll go ahead and download some flat file data, bring it into PowerPivot, model it, and then build a dashboard that users can use with Slice and Dice capabilities in just a few minutes. And by following this video, if you haven't used PowerPivot in the past and you have some familiarity with Excel, you'll be able to follow along and learn how to go through the entire process. Let's start by going to data.gov, which is a site that the United States government provides in order to link to different types of data which they make available to the public. Hitting on the link for raw data, the data we'll be using today is from the Department of Energy and it is data collected in response to the 2011 nuclear disaster in Japan, the Fukushima incident, and the data is radiological air samples. We'll go ahead and click on that link. You'll see there's a nice description of the data, what it's all about. Uh, additionally, there's some other nice links on this page. We could take a look at the data dictionary. And opening that up, you'll get some definitions as to what some of the different fields in this data set are. So let's go ahead and go back to the top of the page and let's download that CSV file. So we will download that to a folder. And there's not a lot of data in the file, only about 7,000 rows, so it downloaded pretty quick. Now most of you are probably familiar with a CSV file. Uh, for those of you who aren't, it's a way of storing data in a very compact and efficient manner. Let's just take a look at it. Uh, let's open it with Notepad so we can see what it really looks like. So if we were to open that data with Notepad, you'll see that each value in a column on a row is separated by a comma. So it's basically data that is efficiently stored but looking at this, it's really hard to see what's going on with that information. So now that we have that file, let's go ahead and go to Excel. And here in Excel, we do have the Power Pivot add-in installed, which you can get for free um, at the Microsoft Power Pivot site. It's a free plugin for Excel 2010. And let's open up that Power Pivot window. Once we're in Power Pivot, we'll select data from text. And we'll call the connection uh, Fukushima and we'll select the file path and we'll select file type CSV file. There's the data we just downloaded. Go ahead and open it up and we'll expand this a little bit to the left and to the right. We'll keep the first row as column headers. And if you read the blog posts, you'll see that uh, we can go ahead and not import type, source, and moisture percentage. So for example, with type, you'll see that every single one of them was collected with an air filter. So we don't really don't need that in the report because they're all the same. Now, if there were ever additional data added in the future, you might want to bring it in because there may be additional types that are also being brought in. We'll do the same thing for source, since they're all coming from the DOE. And then we will also do it for moisture percentage, since that was a column which was blank in this data set. We'll hit finish, and just a hair under 7,000 rows uh, were pulled into Power Pivot in that time. And now we have our uh, data table pulled into Power Pivot where we can begin to work with it. So we don't need analysis ID in the report. It's more of a, a key column. It's not something that uh, users are going to want to see, uh, at least not at this point. So we'll hide it from the client tool and we'll also do the same thing with sample ID. And by hiding these from the client tools, we basically make them invisible to the people who will be viewing the dashboard. Then uh, we'll go ahead and move down the columns. Latitude, longitude, distance, miles, and bearing. Uh, all of those right now are decimal numbers and we'll put those in the format of a decimal number. So we're only looking at uh, two uh, 
places after the decimal. Collection date came in as text. We'll go ahead and make that a date column so Power Pivot recognizes it as a date. And we'll leave it in that format since there were times that were associated uh, when the collection was uh, done. Volume looks good. MDA, we'll leave that as it is. And then we'll go ahead and add two additional columns just for demo purposes. We won't use them on the dashboard. But uh, if you wanted to uh, add the month and year, you can basically take that from the collection date if that's all that you have in your source data set. So let's use a little uh, DAX code here. So equals month. Collection date. Then we'll rename that column month. And then we'll add another column. For this one, we'll do the year. And rename that one year. So with those two pieces of code, we've taken another column and we've added the roll-up value for month and for year. So let's go ahead and, uh, and add a custom DAX calculation to the calculation bar at the bottom. And this is useful for a number of reasons because these calculations calculate as you actually run the report. It's not stored in the data model itself. So if we just want to do a count for the number of uh, sample measurements that we're looking at, we could call it count. And we'll select the function for count rows and then the table name. And you can see that the count of 6,998 matches the number of records that we have down at the bottom. So it is working. And then when we hook up filters, it'll also uh, work with those filters and give us the correct count of rows. Let's take a look at the diagram view quickly. Now, this is a very simplified data model that we're working with. Uh, this is a video which is meant for beginners and people who are new to Power Pivot. And, uh, one of the nice things with Power Pivot is you can pull in um, a table that has not been normalized and, and work with it and still have it be a slice and dice BI solution. If you read the blog posts, you'll remember that the logical way of looking at how reporting would be done in a cube for this type of data would look more like this. Uh, however, we're doing an accelerated reporting model here, so we're just going to stick with the one single table. And you can see our calculated uh, measure down here for count is showing up. And if we wanted to add a hierarchy for date, it's very easy to do. Then we can just pull in the year at the top level, month at the next level down, and then collection date at the most granular level. So there we go, we've already built a custom calculation and a date hierarchy into this reporting model. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and deploy the dashboard. Let's create a dashboard with a pivot chart. Let's keep it simple. And let's rename it. And so now what we've done is we've pulled in that CSV file We've specified the calculations and the way that we want the data to appear, and Power Pivot has basically made a tabular cube for us in the background, which is now displaying to the user as a pivot table, which is very similar to the uh, pivot tables that, uh, that you've worked with in the past in Excel. So let's go ahead and start building out our dashboard. So we'll start by looking at results. So we'll pull results into the value field. And right now it's at a sum level. Uh, for the purpose of what we're looking at, we'll want to look at the average level. And we'll name it 
average result. And then we'll also want to bring in that count value that we created in Power Pivot. And right now it uh, looks a little bit goofy, so let's uh, let's put count onto the secondary axis, which you'll see pop up there on the right side of the chart. And let's make it a line chart. All right. So now as we start to slice and dice, this uh, this will give us a much better visualization. Let's go ahead and pull in some slicers. So we'll start by pulling in unit. And then we'll also pull in nuclide. Now it's important with nuclide, we can uh, technically do roll-ups and we can do multi-select. However, I'm not an expert on radioactivity and I don't know how, uh, for example, CE-144, which I'm assuming is um, uh, going to be a little bit different than BA-140, how those would aggregate. So for the purpose of this report, it's intended to be a single select filter. Now back on the chart, let's go ahead and pull direction in on the x-axis. So now we can take a look at what was the average result and how many measurements were taken for a specific nuclide or a gross measurement of some sort. for each direction uh, from the disaster site. Also the units up here, I'm not sure if it's uh, intentional or not to have two different types of unit, uh, but it does look like there were only a few measurements done for the UCI value, whereas there were several for the UCI uh, backslash ML or forward slash ML. So having that on there, we'll go ahead and add a second pivot chart. We'll just leave it right there. And for this one, we'll go ahead and put the average result on the value again. We're just going to display it a little bit differently. Once again, change it from the default value of sum to average. Then we will put distance on there also. distances and miles from the disaster site. So we'll go ahead and drop that on the other axis. Widen it out a little bit to make it easier to view. And this is uh, so far not very useful, but you'll see as we modify it a little bit more that it'll, it'll take form. For now, let's get rid of the title. So let's go ahead and add some slicers for this uh, chart also. So first of all, let's hook up the nuclide slicer to it. If we right click on it, we can add it to that pivot table. Then you'll see that it has been sliced for SR89. And we'll also go ahead and add that unit value as a slicer. Things are starting to look a little bit better. Then we'll take this chart and we will make it a line chart. And to make it a little bit more interesting, let's go ahead and add a trend line. So now we have a chart that's showing what the reading value was, the average result, uh, basically based on the distance from the disaster site, and you can slice and dice by the different types of nuclides. So let's go ahead and add some more slicers to that particular chart. Since direction is on the chart above, we'll add it as a separate slicer on this chart. And we'll go ahead and bring in method code. And unit's already hooked up, and nuclide is already hooked up. So we actually have four different slicers hooked up to that particular uh, graph. Go ahead and just uh, make these line up a little bit better. 
So now we've already built a dashboard with the slicers. Let's go ahead and uh, just spruce it up a little bit and give it some nice visual effects. So let's start down here on this graph. And in design, we can change the color of the line. Let's keep it a, uh, a line chart without uh, markers for each of those mini distance values. Let's get rid of those field buttons. Then let's go ahead and uh, give it a little bit of fill and a border. And then let's do the same thing for its slicers. Also, that uh, that trend line isn't very easy to see. So let's reformat that a little bit. Let's make it a little bit thicker. And let's give it a different color. So that, uh, that particular chart looks a little bit better and uh, a little bit easier to read. See, it still slices and dices just like everything else. And up at the top, you'll see that uh, the largest number of counts or the largest number of tests was taken from the direction south southwest. So let's go ahead and just filter by that direction since there's a, a large volume that they're looking at. And you can see that the trend line goes down uh, as you get further away from the site. Uh, whether or not that's expected or whether or not statistically relevant, uh, we're not looking at that today because, as I said before, I don't know very much about radioactivity. I'm just showing you a way to report the data and hopefully uh, give you some examples that you can work with uh, moving forward with PowerPivot. Let's go ahead and reformat these slicers. And then let's reformat the top chart. Let's give this one a nice 3D effect line looks a little too bold. Get rid of those field buttons. So there we go. We have a slice and dice dashboard in Power Pivot from raw data that we downloaded just a few minutes ago. And you can move through all of the different nuclides so you can see what their values are for South Southwest on the bottom chart and for the entire uh, summation of different directions which measurements were taken at at the top. And it gives you that interactive dashboard on thousands of rows of data. Uh, in a way that, uh, that users can easily figure out if they're adept at navigating websites. Once again, the related posts to this video can be found at blog.gnetgroup.com. If there are additional questions, please email us at sales at or leave a message on our blog or here on this YouTube video.